Good morning. The Consumer Bankers Association is pleased to welcome you to today's webinar, Preparing Your Customers for Digital Banking During and Post COVID-19 Restrictions, presented by Horizon. My name is Tina. Thank you for joining. Please note we are recording and we muted all participant lines. If you have any trouble, please email cba at compartners.com or send a message in the chat box. This presentation will last up to 60 minutes and will include question and answer opportunities at the end. You may submit a question at any time by typing into the chat box in the lower left corner of the screen and clicking the send button. I would like to direct your attention to the links box located to the left of the screen where resources are located for you to view, save, or print. Simply click on the link of your choice and a separate web browser window will open. This will not interfere with your viewing of the program. As a reminder, the views expressed in this webinar are those of the presenters and do not represent the views of CBA or its members. It is now my pleasure to turn this over to our moderator, Steve Frook, SVP Sales Horizon. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Tina. Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Frook. SVP of Sales at Horizon. Horizon is a leading fintech company that's 100% focused on helping banks to increase digital awareness, fluency, and confidence levels of bank customers and employees. We're 100% focused on helping banks, and our results over the last five years have been incredible, increasing adoption levels of key innovations by 25%. We focus on the human side of digital innovation, or you might think of it as the last mile of innovation, ensuring that everyone is aware and fluent and confident on how to utilize the capabilities. So it's our pleasure today to moderate this webinar. Today I'm joined by three of Horizon partners to discuss, to discuss one of the most important topics in banking at the moment, preparing your customers for pre and post-banking in a COVID-19 era. Let me allow our speakers to introduce themselves, and then we'll start the session. Kirk Benson from U.S. Bank, if you could introduce yourself, please. Hey, Kirk Benson. Good morning to everyone. Um, uh, I am the Consumer and Business Banking Business Digital Officer, where um, I'm helping the consumer bank uh, build new digital capabilities as well as, as we build those, make sure that our colleagues and our customers are um, aware of them, using them, and are advocates for them. Perfect. Thanks, Kirk. We also have uh, Brandon Horbowitz from M&T Bank. Hi, everyone. Brandon Horbowitz, as Steve said, from m and I run our retail education and behavioral change team. Uh, for the consumer bank, so I support 730 branches, over 5,000 uh, employees that are our frontline employees in the branch network, as well as uh, partner with our digital and business banking partners um, in their sales force. And thank you for having me. Excellent. Thanks for joining us, Brandon. And our third panelist is Christian Gregory from People's United Bank. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Christian Gregory from People's United, and I am responsible for our commercial digital product set in terms of customer engagement and adoption, as well as the strategy to move forward with that, uh, with uh, uh, depth of experience around our retail and uh, branch support channels as well. Excellent. Thank you, Christian, and thank all thank you all of you for joining us today. So to set the stage for today's discussion, I've prepared a few comments to begin with. As we all know, we've experienced in the last few months massive changing from a, changes from a banking perspective at a pace and at a magnitude really unimaginable. Digital banking has moved from being a nice-to-have to the primary way to do banking. Some customers who may have had no or even just limited digital banking experiences were faced to adopt and often needed to um, adopt digital banking capabilities. And oftentimes they needed a lot of assistance from their trusted bank as well. And how banks assisted their customers throughout this challenging environment will really speak volumes to relationships as we go through, um, as we look to the future. In our discussion today, our panelists will be asked questions in three different categories. The first cast category will be really reflective in nature, 
looking at how banks and employers, employees have managed over the last two months. The second part will be looking at how U.S. Bank, People's United Bank, and M&T are assisting customers today. And then the third part of our discussion is going to be looking at reentry and getting the panelists' view on what banking looks like as we move from the COVID-19 environment. At the end of each section, there's going to be questions. So please participate in the questions, and we'll have polls. And of course, we'll be discussing those polls and the results of the polls as we go through the, as we go through the webinar. And then finally, as Tina mentioned at the beginning as well, there's going to be ample time to ask questions. So as we're going through this session, if you've got questions that uh, you would like us to go into more detail with, there's an audience question section on your panel bar that you can uh, type in your question. And uh, of course, we can answer those uh, at the end of this session. Okay, well, with that, let's get started. And Kirk, I'm going to pass the first question to you. And that question is, is what has it been like from a U.S. bank non-digital customer over the last two months? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, you know, for, for non-digital customers at, at U.S. Bank, I think probably life's been a, a lot like it has been for all of us, right? So um, there has had to be a lot of uh, changing and adjusting kind of in a, in a COVID environment. And, you know, if you think about it, for non-digital customers, um, there's uh, uh, been a big draw towards digital as a tool, both in personalized and in banking. From a personal perspective, um, you know, I was just reading a stat that, you know, 26% of U.S. households that had never used a streaming television service have started to do that in a COVID environment. Um, you know, from a behavioral standpoint, um, you know, uh, third-party apps um, are up about 700% in terms of downloads uh, just for Apple alone. And, you know, if you, if you, if you take – you know, one of those, which is House Party, that is up 500%. And where I'm going is life for non-digital customers um, is there's a big draw to use digital as a tool. And, um, it, you know, in at U.S. Bank, I hear so many stories about how digital has helped what is non-traditionally digital customers bank um, bank from home uh, and use um, money movement services, mobile check deposit, Zelle, to kind of get done what they need to get done. So very much kind of been an adjustment and an appetite to understand digital as a tool more. Yeah, that's great. And those are some, some fantastic uh, um, numbers with regards to increase in, in, in not just banking from a digital perspective, but uh, the life. I mean, and who knows if it was the Tiger King that uh, spawned off the uh, increase yeah. in streaming or not. But uh, <laughs> I, I know I took a look at that, and it was quite interesting. I, I guess, Brandon, from from an M&T bank standpoint, I mean, what, one of the interesting things that has happened over the last two months is is that, of course, the the channel that some customers had uh, had, had gone to before, which is going to the bank, that channel just wasn't an, available. So. What has it been like from an M and T bank customer perspective? Yeah, thanks, Steve. I so from an M and T perspective, I mean, we were fortunate enough to have nearly all of our branches stay open. I mean, that's not to say that we didn't um, have some closures in in New York City, New Jersey area, but we did take by appointment only. And so what we saw was a pretty significant drop in both branch transactions and ATM transactions. And and, and prior to the COVID outbreak, we would average somewhere around four to 5,000 digital demos by our employees. And those were conversations had right in the branch with customers, being able to show them different things from rolling in online banking and mobile banking to how to enroll and send payments in Zelle to mobile check deposit. And what we didn't see from customers prior to COVID, and some of that is, is our own doing, right? We didn't have the demos on a public site easily accessible to all of our customers that we advertise marketing. But the moment that we saw and we knew that we were going to be taking appointments only and digital was really going to become the focus, 
we put together a COVID response page, and what we saw was where we averaged maybe a couple hundred of self-service demos trying to understand how to engage digitally with M&T, all of a sudden spiked to two and a half, three thousand a week where customers were going and seeking out not only how to engage with us digitally, but then practicing it so that they can be prepared to do those types of transactions. And at that same time, we were able to work with the Horizon team to um, shift the ability to email demos to clients as well so that we could um, provide that same level of guidance and advice to our customers but allow t allow them to see what we were talking about when we were on the phone. So not only was it them looking for advice and guidance from us, but it was also them seeking out their own self-service guidance um, in a way we hadn't seen before. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I, I love what you were saying about the concept of customers practicing digital banking. And uh, perhaps it's something that we don't think about enough, but that, that need to be able to increase one's confidence levels to do something that they haven't done before. And, and having simulators and demos to be able to provide that to your customers, and obviously you're seeing it with the volume that they're being utilized, has been extremely helpful. Uh, Christian, when, when you think from a People's United Bank perspective, and I, and I know you had a number of things going on. There was a, a merger happening uh, throughout this process as well and new customers coming on board. What, what has it been like for, for your customers over the last couple months? Yeah, I think for our standpoint, right, I think we kind of had a perfect storm where, um, you know, a silver lining to, to what we've, you know, how we've approached it through the, the process of the recent acquisition, acquisition that we made in, in early April and, and during the, you know, the, the pandemic time frame, it's really an opportunity for us to, to introduce digital, right, to our, our newly acquired customers as well as those that, you know, our existing customers that may have not opted to use those channels just yet. Uh, so I think with us, you know, over the last, you know, few months and, you know, really before that too, but more recently over the last few months, it's really been a, a strong focus of our, our marketing communication. So as our marketing partners uh, assist us in communicating out the benefits and uh, help those customers realize, you know, how effective the channels can be. I think we're, we're seeing, a, you know, a pretty dramatic shift uh, over to our, our digital uh, usage from those customers, whether it's new or existing customers that, you know, maybe had an option to go into the branch or use different channels in the past. Uh, I think it's important also to focus really on not just the external customer, but also the, the internal customers and your employees within the bank too. Uh, so for whether it's a non-digital, you know, external customer to you, or employees that, you know, are, are familiar with the systems that may not have adopted those yet. I think there's kind of two different fronts that you, you can approach that to, to uh, really, you know, engage the employees, but also make sure that those employees are educated enough to engage those non-digital users uh, appropriately, whether it's, you know, over the phone or self-service opportunities chat um, with the lesser, you know, uh, traffic coming into the branches recently. Uh, the technology be behind that, right, is, is really important. So whether it's, you know, a mobile-friendly, depending on the device that customer is using, um, you know, being at home, whether it's a tablet or sitting on the couch, you know, on, you're, you know they're on their actual like, iPhone or other type of mobile device or a laptop or computer, you really want to make sure that, you know, the, the focus for, for what those customers are using is responsive to, um, to that type of device. I think that experience is something that is critical as, as far as making sure the customer experience is up to par for what you know, they're expecting from other services they use, like the, the Netflix and Amazons and Apples of the world, right, that are really focused on making sure the customer experience is, uh, is superior. And, and that's what I think where banks need to continue focusing on and where we've uh, really put a lot of our attention towards uh, in recently. Yeah, terrific. I, I, I really like your comments of, of not only thinking about the the customer, but also thinking about the employee and, of course, their interactions that they're going to need to have with their customers as well. And, I mean, I, I think all three of your organizations have done a, a really great job of being able to take a very difficult situation for non-digital customers and being very thoughtful in your approaches to be able to have consumers uh, adopt digital for the first time, and, and I think that's, uh, that's wonderful. Um, I guess just to continue on a little bit on that, Christian, is I guess what have you seen from, a, from an increase in digital banking over the last two months? Has there been a, a major spike in it, or what, 
what, what type of things can you share with us from a, uh, from a people's perspective? Yeah, I think for, for us, right, we're kind of uniquely positioned as, as some of the other uh, folks on the line are in, in terms of where we're located ge ge geographically, uh, being closer to the New York City uh, metro area. And so while we're spread across New England, uh, we have a heavy presence within that area too. So there's been a obviously a major major shift there in, in terms of um, quarantine and, and really being that enforcing the social distancing um, responsibilities that we're advised to do. And and so you know over the last you know couple months, whether it's our consumer customers and even our, our small business customers, which you know we we really need to continue focusing on as well. Uh, you know we're seeing some pretty significant increases across the channels, whether it's, you know, with electronic payments for, for ACH or wires, um, or as Kirk mentioned earlier around, you know, mobile check deposit and just logins in general, you know, as stimulus payments and the, uh, and, and those deposits are made to the customer's accounts. I think that's where we're seeing, you know, folks really jumping in and, and logging in. You know, we saw one of our highest days of login activity from a mobile perspective uh, in mid-April as those payments were starting to hit their accounts. So really making sure that, your, your infrastructure is strong and can support that type of uh, increase in traffic is important to consider. Uh, I think also, you know, for us, you know, it's, it's not really just about the, the volume per se. I think, you know, a good way for these customers, you know, as, as we're seeing increases in traffic uh, in, and they're new to the customer uh, from those non-digital users previously, um, you know, getting that feedback is, is important. Uh, so, what, so as I said, you know, we're doing a lot of emails, so maybe surveys aren't the best thing to do right now. Uh, and just kind of overloading them with more and more communications. But it's, it's really making sure you're showing that you care personally around them and, and uh, you know, make sure you understand the situation that those customers may be experiencing. And so I would, I would suggest, you know, making sure that, you know, as, as an opportunity, uh, especially on the mobile side, really, right, is, you know, keep an eye on those app store reviews for customers and their feedback there. I think that's, it's a really great tool and a great way to get real-time feedback, you know, from those customers uh, and, and be able to act on it pretty quickly. Yeah, good stuff. Perfect. Um, and Brandon, I guess you mentioned in the in, in the initial question, you were able to keep from an M and T perspective, you were able to keep um, a lot of your branches open. What what have you seen from a from an increase in digital banking over the last two months? Yeah, even though the branches were open and our employees were right there to answer questions, we still saw you know as as I said earlier, significant drop in both branch transactions and, and ATM transactions. And, and you would expect that, right? Everyone's staying at home. People may not want to handle cash. Um, but what we saw was, you know, at, at M&T, almost a 60% increase in digital enrollments if we looked at what was happening in January and February versus what happened in March and April. So a significant jump in new people enrolling. And then on top of it to the, the point, um, that Christian had said is the sign-on aspect, right? So can your network handle it? And if so, expect an increase in activity. And we saw almost a 40% jump in, in digital sign-ons and using the platform. So I think w what comes with that then is an increase in um, needing guidance, right? And, and one of the things to come out of this, I think any bank can take from this is many customers didn't pick up the phone when we called before. And now almost everyone not only are picking up, but they want to talk to someone, right? Um, and they usually have a question. And it doesn't mean it always has to be about digital, but when you think about ways to use the bank, that's probably where the conversation is going to go. So um, from an appointment standpoint, I'm talking on the phone um, to our, our contact center queue being up um, during that time period for both questions and guidance and, and advice, um, I think customers want advice and guidance. And they some will seek it out and some we may have to seek out to help them so don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call because we're seeing a lot of um, guidance on the digital front and that's with our ability to send quick emails with these demos you could be talking to a customer who says I can't I'm afraid to come into the branch to deposit my check well they may not have that check in front of them, but you could walk them through and show them in a, in a minute or two how to do a mobile check deposit and say, save this as a favorite so when you're ready to do your check deposit, you have a guide for you right then and there or call me back. So um, I think it's about being there for the customer and, and, and offering your help and being confident in showing them the systems that they can use. Yeah, something I hadn't thought about, the, the, the receptiveness of people to answer their phone and to talk to somebody perhaps just even if it's anyone outside of their, uh, 
immediate family. Uh, so that, that's kind of an interesting thought. And then, and then when it's your bank and they're there to help you with your banking, then, of course, that's even, uh, even, even more helpful. Uh, Kirk, from a, from a U.S. bank standpoint, any, any nuggets to share with the group here with regards to uh, um, increasing in digital banking? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably along the, the, the similar veins that Brandon and Christian kind of touched on. So from a U.S. bank perspective, we're seeing an increase in um, kind of digital overall, but, you know, particularly in the places where, you know, customers need it in a COVID environment. So very much we're um, seeing an increase in um, enrollment across, you know, digital, Zelle, mobile check deposit, um, as well as, um, you know, applications for credit, unsurprisingly. Um, and, um, you know, throughout that, there's definitely a need that we're seeing to help customers along that process, um, uh, whether that's um, in with co-browse or obviously then um, using demos um, to send out and help customers so they can, you know, trust it before they try it. So uh, we've had a number of cases where we've been able to send out our mobile check deposit demo uh, via email, and that's really helped people kind of adopt, uh, adopt that and maintain social distancing. Yeah, I love it. So not only telling somebody how they can continue to bank in a world where social di distancing is occurring, but then also showing them with demos and uh, simulators on how to do it. Fantastic. Okay. Let's jump ahead to the next question. And Christian touched on this a, a little bit in, uh, in his comment. And really what the question is about is, is that, of course, you've got customers, which most banks are very focused on being able to assist from a digital standpoint. But we also have employees. And oftentimes from an employee perspective, as we all know, not all employees bank with the bank they work with. Not all have downloaded the bank's app. Not all are digitally fluent. But when we think about the, the volume of calls coming into call centers or calling into branches or asking for support, you know, a lot of times these employees had to very quickly become digital experts to be able to help customers out. So, so Brandon, just maybe I'll throw this question to you. Is, 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 is how are your frontline-facing customers um, and frontline customer-facing employees managing with a – with, with the current change and, and the volume of that change? Yeah, the, I mean, I, I cannot thank our frontline employees, you know, enough. And we, we try to hold huddles every week with them, and our leadership teams are out there, and when we can get out and get donuts or coffee for them, because, you know, as many of us, and, and M&T's got 17,000 employees, and half of those employees are probably sheltering at home and working, you know, in their dining room like I am right now, whereas everyone else, is, they're getting up every day and going there. And I think the one thing that I, I feel fortunate that we were – a little ahead of the curve on the digital side in the education was we started on this education journey 18 months ago and there's no mistake or just, there's no way to think that um, there isn't going to be a fear of the digital space and our employees had that fear 18 months ago and there was fears for different reasons right like am I going to look stupid in front of the customer because I don't know what I'm talking about or I'm not comfortable because I don't have a smartphone or you know it, um, you know, the customer may know more than me, or am I going to get paid the same on an incentive plan because I'm doing something digitally and they're self-servicing instead of coming to me for everything. And so I think it's overcoming those fears, whether you do it now during the COVID crisis, after, or if you started beforehand. Um, because it, at the end of the day, our, our motto before the, this and coming out of this is one connected bank. And, and I think this pandemic has taught us that we have to embrace our coworkers, whether they're in the contact center, whether they're creating digital solutions for our customers, or they're the branch employees or, or your partners like a business banking RM, but we should all be connected as one because ultimately customers are going to want to bank with us the way they choose, not the way we want them to. And 
for us, uh, where I was going with the whole fear is, is that we had 18 months of time to really get everyone comfortable with, with digital basics, whether it was enrollment, how the system looked, how to set up alerts, how to use Zelle, how to use mobile check deposit. And so now during this crisis, the volume has not changed, but the way we deliver the education has changed, and, and that's more about being over the phone and walking someone through it, and not necessarily being side by side with them, but doing it um, virtually, right? And I think the next step of that journey for us is how do we do video conferences with our, our customers? How do we maybe, instead of tilting the screen and showing them how to do a digital activity, we're sharing our screen and passing the presenter icon and letting them try from home. Um, so those are things that now as we go forward, it's not necessarily a volume change for M&T, but it's how we connect with our customers that is, that is changing and will continue to change. Love it. Love the one, uh, one connected bank and, uh, and also the fact that you've been able to uh, – get a jump start on things 18 months ago, I think it's really important. And I think you're, you're bang on is, is that employees in whichever industry it is when dealing with customers, they're only going to talk about things that they feel comfortable with. And they're going to shy away from things that may not make them look um, as smart as they would like them to be. And, and, and obviously educating uh, employees on digital capabilities is, is super important. Um, Christian, any, any, any thoughts to add to, to Brandon's comments there? Yeah, I, I would just add that I, I think it's very important as you're going about the education, which you know I think all of us can't stress enough in, in times like this for our, our employees that are servicing our customers uh, around the different channels that we, that we support and offer, is, is really to have a, a champion within each of those areas. So whether it's your call center, contact centers, your branch, uh, market different markets you know across different um, states or communities you may serve. I think having you know a, a single voice or, or multiple voices for that matter, uh, helping you know really support and be advocates for the uh, education platforms that are available to your employees is is really important. Uh, being able to uh, you know connect with that employee and help them understand what's available to them and how that they can self serve them uh, their own education and kind of be their own driver. Uh, for that is is also an important part of that to consider. So so what we did here at Peoples uh, when we initially were rolling out our, our digital learning um, simulators is we we formed that partnership early on in the process uh, and continue to uh, uh, you know build upon that as we go forward with it. Where we where we do have you know select folks across different areas of the of the bank as well as in the uh, in the branch and regional banking networks to really be that that voice for us. Uh, it's hard for us to really travel around from state to state, right, as, as one person or, or even a, a group of, of people. But if you have that, that community voice who's strong with their customers, who knows their customers better than, than we may know them, um, as well as their employees within those different markets and, and really understand, you know, what they're feeling, what they're hearing from their customers, uh, I think is, is something that should be focused on as you're thinking about educating your customers and really making your employees and customers comfortable using the technology. Yeah, no, fantastic. And I, I think there's also just that other layer on it as well, or multiple layers when we think about our frontline employees. And I, and I always say that the frontline employees, whether it be call center or, or in a branch, they have tough jobs because there's a lot new happening from a digital capability that they've got to be up to speed on, plus everything else that they, they, they need to be knowledgeable about. So it's not an easy job. But then layered on top of that, you've now got not only – digitally curious people that may be asking questions. You've got people who just need to continue banking and are asking that question. And then they're also obviously in a fragile state with um, all the turmoil that's going on as well. Uh, Kirk, any, any, any thoughts on, on that question to share? Yeah, just probably a couple things to build off what you just said. So, you, you know, you, you, you basically talked about there's a lot going on in the world and in people's lives. And so, you know, what we're working with our front line is, you know, first and foremost to, to start with empathy and really focus on what are our customers' needs. Um, and then obviously, you know, on top of that, there is um, uh, we're, we're taking an inside-out approach to help our customers in terms of, digital fluency, which you mentioned earlier, um, through what we call our digital learning center to um, make sure that um, our frontline 
um, really knows all of our capabilities and then connects it to help, how it helps uh, customers in their in their daily lives. And we've got a pretty good feedback loop just in terms of kind of measuring that level of knowledge um, internally. And then that obviously then we bring it to market um, with our customers in our conversations um, to kind of help them do what they need to do. Okay, excellent. Well, let's, let's pull the audience and participants. Uh, this is our poll question number two. There'll be uh, a series of poll questions throughout this presentation. So the, the question that we're posing is, has your bank experienced an increase in active digital customers over the last two months? So if you can just take a moment and uh, select A, B, or C, that would be, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, Christian, any, any predictions on, on where this is going to land? I'm going I'm to go with the uh, you know, C category. Okay. Got it. And, and I guess, Kirk, just while we're waiting for, for responses here, when we think about active digital customers, is that, is that a key metric that, that you're keeping a close eye on? It, I mean, simply stated, yeah, very much so, right? So, um, so we really want to help our customers in their daily lives. And um, given the fact that, um, you know, our smartphones is with us wherever we go, we, we, our goal is to make sure uh, U.S. Bank is with our customers wherever they go through our mobile app. And so we very much, um, you know, track digital actives and app actives on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Very, very closely. Got it. So, Brandon, it looks like Christian's prediction C was right, but 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 it is distributed. I mean, I think the 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 interesting thought is is that you know there's roughly a third uh, they're saying modest increase, and then two thirds saying significant increase. With a few coming in, there's no change. Any thoughts on those those results from the the poll question, Brandon? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it also depends too on on the the audience and the 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 size of the bank and and how focused you are on relationship management, right? And and I think one of the reasons I would say M and T's gone through a significant increase is because we are a strong relationship bank. I think you know one of the things we pride ourselves on is our ability to connect with our customers and how. Um, close we are with not only them but the communities they live in and the communities our employees work in. And so um, we still have a significant volume of people that will still walk through the door to do certain transactions. And, and to be completely honest, my mom's one of them. And until this crisis, there, she didn't have direct deposit. She only had an ATM card. She didn't bank digitally, even though she has someone that literally shows her every time she comes over how to deposit a check mobily until this happened, right? And so I think for us, it's those type of customers like my mother that that you know the crisis almost brought a brought it upon her to say all right i'm going to learn this new way to bank um and that's not to say that we haven't been engaging digitally before but i think the convenience and and, and the way our customers have always expected the service from us um digital was an option but it wasn't a necessity and i feel like that has changed as time has gone on now got it okay well Let's, with that, move to sort of the, the, the next section here. And I think it likely goes without saying, but nearly every financial institution globally is really faced with two key objectives right now, which is looking at how do we get non-digital customers banking digitally, and then also looking at a segment of digital customers, but how do we actually get them doing more? How do we get them utilizing five plus capabilities of them? And I thought it'd be helpful if maybe just we, we walk through here and just shared how each of your banks are using the Horizon platforms during this period to, to be able to support your customers. So, so Brandon, I guess from, a, from an M&T bank standpoint, we've got some images of the capabilities that uh, Horizon is pleased to supply you with. But maybe you can just provide a, a quick overview of this to the, uh, to the audience. Yeah, so if we're looking from left to right on this, this image here, what this is highlighting really is, is this was M&T's first real crack at bringing Horizon and our digital demo platform 
to the forefront for our customers to self-service. So as I said in the past, our operating model really was to teach our employees, and in turn, they were teaching our customers. Um, that's not to say we didn't have the demos publicly available. We did from day one. Um, but it was more about the employees being able to share them with, with customers, not not customers seeking it out. And so when we realized that we were going to have to you know, provide uh, advice and guidance to our customers, we put together a COVID response page like many other banks did. But within that, that, that space, it talked about um, our capabilities. And you could see in that middle image there that we brought forward some of the key demos. Now, it's not every demo that we've ever done with Horizon, but it was the key ones, right? Enrollment, how to deposit your checks, internal transfers with M&T accounts, paying your bills, um, interacting with Zelle, viewing your statements, the common questions that someone might call a branch, stop it in a branch, or call the contact center for. And to that point, um, you know, we saw in from, I would say, March 23rd, which is kind of when M&T changed their operating model in the branches until um, May 1st, we saw over 17,000 demos being done in, on that public site. And a lot of it was driven through this page here as well as some targeted marketing campaigns. So um, I would say from a, a customer self-service and what the, the biggest change of behavior was our response pages. But to that point, we also, um, I, m I mentioned earlier, we implemented working with Horizon the ability to send a demo to a customer with one click of a button. So if a customer was asking us a question, whether they were in the branch for an appointment with us um, or they were on the phone, we could ask them if they if we have their permission to have their email and we can send them a demo and literally kicks off an automatic email from the bank to the customer and we've sent over 6000 of those emails in just 6 weeks um so the ability to connect that way with Horizon and Digital to our customers directly um instead of what our previous model was which was let's have a side by side experience and we'll show you how to how to do these um these different transactions. So that's kind of where we've come from. Um, as far as the contact center is concerned, our contact center used to build their own demos and still do, whether it was through programs like PowerPoint um, or different uh, screen capture videos. But our goal this year for the second half, and we've already had conversations, is to bring our contact center on board. With the one-click button of an email, we should be able to mimic the same experience a branch employee has over the phone in our contact center, and in turn, raise the digital fluency of our contact center reps to, to make sure that they become digital advocates. So that is a, a key step in the process that we plan on bringing forward here in the coming months. Yeah, excellent. Love the, love the numbers. And those numbers are extremely impressive when you look at the number of customers doing demos in a very short period of time. It, it, it obviously illustrates that there's a, a thirst for customers to be able to see um, how to utilize your, your banking app. So that's, that's great. Uh, Kirk, from a, from a U.S. bank standpoint, um, if you could do something similar, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And... Um, you know, again, working left to right. Um, you know, about a year ago, we launched a new app, so we're just we're just celebrating our, our happy birthday, as as we're calling it, um, uh, around here at US Bank. But what that did is that really gave us a um, a window to um, do a whole lot more education with our customers and colleagues. So we've integrated our employee or our customer facing demos and tutorials into um, a lot of our marketing and promotional material. And effectively, that start has driven through all the way through, um, to, through to COVID. And so um, we've incorporated those demos into our websites, into our email programs, um, into our call center uh, engagement tactics, um, and all the way through to um, you know, very specific use cases. Um, so, for example, like enrolling in Dell, right, is is one area we see that customers need help and has been um, a how-to demo has been critical to that and super supportive. Um, 
as we as we've shifted into COVID, in the bottom right hand, you can you can see is like we continue to highlight those demos under you know kind of what we're terming and and, and other banks are terming bank from home as we support that behavioral change, as well as. Um, we had, you know, one of our digital leads based out of Cincinnati named Joe Guy. He did a Facebook Live um, and talked through all of our bank from home capabilities, which feature, featured um, our Digital Explorer uh, demo capability. So, uh, uh, had a little bit of uh, of fun with that, and 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 that got uh, broadcast out to to a big audience. So, uh, a lot of cool stuff going on. Yeah, absolutely. I loved I loved Joe's video, and uh, I guess I feel the need too to say happy birthday, uh, Kurt. There you go. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I guess Christian, from a from a people's United Bank standpoint, when, when I think about you, and obviously having cust- uh, conversations with our customer success team that works very closely with you, I, I often think about demos everywhere. Uh, but perhaps you could share a little bit about uh, about how you're helping customers utilizing the Horizon platform. Yeah, so I think you know, kind of uh, serendipitous timing where we published our uh, simulators for our consumer online and mobile banking applications the first week of January, and so with that publishing, you know, we made sure to embed them in various channels and various places across the sites. Um, you know, starting on the left side there, you have our, our product pages. So within the actual product page itself, where you get in some feature links to particular, um, you know, uh, details around the different services that we offer, whether it's bill pay or check deposit, things like that. We made sure that the demos were, were within those pages. Um, in the middle of the screen, you have our product page or support page, excuse me. Uh, so customer support is, you know, obviously where a lot of people are going right now. Uh, so we made sure to not just highlight the demos, but highlight, you know, uh, you know, popular support topics that even demos may not be available for. So making sure that those are, are easily accessible to those customers uh, with obviously links to those demos for customers to understand how to use the services. Uh, COVID response, right? So obviously everybody's doing that. You know, everybody's posting messages around long wait times on their websites. Uh, so I think it's important to highlight that across the sites and make sure that folks are aware that these are available um, tools for them to go and learn the, the features and functionalities that the various banks offer. Uh, so making sure that you're, you're really being you know, personal with the messages for those customers is important. I know it's hard to do on, on a public website, uh, but really showing, I think that Kirk mentioned earlier, kind of you know, showing that empathy towards your customer and, and showing that you understand and uh, are there to help them. And then you know, as, as we moved on you know, from the website, you know, during that time, we were also sending you know, several emails. Um, again, as Kirk said, bank from home, right? That was the headline of one of our emails there. Uh, that had links to all directly to the to the simulators, and then we started using social, whether it was LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, or um, uh, Instagram, or, or Twitter, or uh, as well for for various messaging for how we want to you know show and, and share those those um, uh, educational materials with the, with our customers. So I think I think it's important to really make sure you're you're considering all the different options you have available to you. And, and how you're sharing that with the uh, with the customers and your employees. Excellent. Um, I think one of the and it's it's uh, um, it's common amongst all three of your financial institutions is is that the real nice part about simulators and demos is is that Horizon has a has a process where we develop once and we deploy many times. So whether it's being deployed in, in emails or whether it's being used in a contact center or whether it's being used in a chat bot or whether it's being used on your website or et cetera, whatever it could be. So the real nice part is, is you, you, you develop it once and then you can deploy it many places, but then also get the rich analytics back so you get a really clear understanding of the value that you're getting. So let's, let's move into another poll question. And uh, so for the, those individuals that uh, – uh, or online here, if you can participate in the poll, that would be great. The focus that we're posing is, where has your focus been on teaching digital to clients for the first time? And of course, there are many different uh, uh, things that have been focused on in the last two months, but keen to understand whether it's been from banking at home or helping customers enroll in PPP or helping customers to be able to secure EIP or whatever the case might be. 
So, Brandon, maybe we'll, we'll have you play the role as, as predictor here as you start to see the numbers come in. Um, the prediction might already be obvious, but what are your, what are your thoughts? Well, so because it says clients, I believe A is definitely going to to win this one. But if, if we had ever flipped it to say employees, I would have said B definitely. If, if I'm looking from an education perspective and what our team really rallied around those first, you know, four or five weeks, it was the PPP. Um, but I think some of the things that we've learned from launching so many digital capabilities too is that um, if you can build the system the right way, it's more about teaching the employees for guiding our customers, and customers should be able to flow through. So I think A is going to win, but if I was talking about employees, I think PPP was, was a major uh, education effort for our employees. Got it. Yeah, in, in, interesting results, and uh, I definitely think bank from home capabilities is obviously the, the clear winner, so, so interesting. Okay, well, let, let's move to the, the third part here, and while – Nobody can be certain, of course, what the future holds. We can all likely agree that the new normal is much different than the past. And we can also likely all agree that the future is much more digital than what we experienced just a short amount of time before. So let's, let's look at a question and we'll sort of go, uh, um, go uh, round table here to, to get some views on this and then we'll We'll go to another poll question and um, ask some general questions as well. So the question that we're posing to you panelists are, when you think about re-entry and post-pandemic, how do you think this experience will change digital banking? And how will your bank continue to support customers' digital banking needs going forward? So Kirk, we'll, we'll throw that first question, uh, the, uh, the first ability to comment uh, to you. Yeah, and it's it's always it's always um, fun to talk about the future. And um, I heard a good quote the other day where um, uh, you know somebody said the only thing I know is I don't know, but the future is not going to be the same as today. And um, I think that's very true. As I think about you know reentry and life and banking life in a post COVID world. Um, you know, you can start to um, very much understand that human and customer behavior is going to continue to be different, you know, driven by very real things around, um, you know, a more touchless environment, right? So whether that's um, um, mobile wallets being used much more to pay at terminals, you know, tapless credit cards, um, et cetera, or how we, how we teach and engage customers um, more virtually um, through video, which was mentioned earlier, or co-browse, um, or obviously kind of demos and tutorials. Um, that need to um, have a shared experience between a human being um, and a customer and learning how to um, – you know, service banking virtually, as well as also doing that more on the sales side, I think is going to um, be something that continues to grow. Um, and we are obviously wanting to do everything we can at U.S. Bank to help customers through that. So, you know, things like make sure they've got the money movement limits that they need to, to um, – uh, you know, manage their daily transactions. Um, we've done everything we can, obviously, um, with, you know, PPP and EIP and all the stimulus kind of go on, make sure customers can deposit treasury checks. Um, and then I, you know, touched on, you know, that inside-out approach, but really focusing on, you know, training and advocacy for, um, for kind of, you know, digital. So I think COVID's all probably, um, uh, and Brandon and Christian can comment on this too, but all probably accelerated digital transformation by about five years, even, even in just the two months kind of we've been going through this. So um, th there's definitely going to be kind of a continued shift uh, uh, from that perspective in, 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 in how our customers interact with us. Yeah, no, it's uh, it does feel like we've been in a uh, a bit of a uh, a time machine going forward uh, five years, uh, as as you mentioned in, in, in two months. Um, so 
I guess, Brandon, similarly from, from your perspective, and maybe I'll even tie it a little bit to you know, when we think about you know, the branch of the future, et cetera. And I remember standing in your, 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 your offices and talking to you about these, these new pods and new capabilities that, that you've set up so that you could have really intimate conversations with customers. What are your thoughts in the future, sort of, uh, you know, what, what the future holds for, for that sort of uh, topic? Yeah, thanks. I, you know, it's funny, 12 months ago, I was on a committee with so many other people. And when you think about the retail spaces and, you know, and I'm not just talking financial institutions, but if you walk into an Apple store, you know, it's open and there's people and they're walking around standing side by side. You go into the Verizon store, which I always use as an example because they share just as much personal financial information, but they had a very open setting. Um, and everything was, was leaning towards standing or, or sitting side by side with a customer and creating shared experiences. Opportunities to tilt the monitor, open an account, pass the keyboard, type in your PIN for your debit card, right? And so we started to create a branch environment that allowed us to have open, clear sight lines, to be able to navigate from standing to sitting easily with our with our customers and share those experiences. And now you fast forward to where we are now, and you know those those interactions are going to look much different. And I think the the thing that we can take away from from all this is we did put other technology in there that are going to be enormously important as we go forward, right? So we gave all of our managers um, monitors that had a pop-up camera that comes right out of the top. Um, but at the time, we didn't have a use case for it, right? We started to build conference rooms with video conference capabilities, but customers weren't necessarily comfortable engaging through video. They rather either talk over the phone or come in and sit down in person. So I think some of the things that we'll see coming out of this is that customer behaviors have changed because video conferences have become the new normal and interacting with, let's say, an e-signature document may become more normal, especially with our business customers after the PPP um, program has come forward. So I think for us, it's how do we reconfigure or reshape our branches to adhere to social distance, but still provide the guidance that our customers want, but then shift our ability to bring new capabilities to our bankers to do things for customers that don't want to walk through the front door, or if employees don't feel comfortable necessarily having that conversation. So for us, we're looking at things like digital appointment settings so that customers can come in when it's convenient for them. We're looking at um, electronic signatures so and file sharing um, so that we can get IDs electronically. And all that will be an education need for our employees. And, and that's where we look to partner with Horizon to say, all right, if we bring forward rapid, quick capabilities and we move fast to bring these for our customers, how do we get our employees up and running? So the, the education on that aspect is going to be huge. Yeah, it's great. And and Kristen, I guess when you think about the future, and the future could be two months from now, or it could be six months from now, or whatever it may be, do you, do you think this will all push banking to almost go away from physical banking versus digital banking to just become banking? Uh, that's a really great question, Steve. You know, I I'd, I'd see you know customer behavior where you know in-person banking, whether it's physically in-person or, you know, over video chat or other means, um, you know, it could have a shift towards, you know, just one overall term that would define it. Uh, and I think that's kind of where we, you know, need to be moving towards anyway. Uh, you know, uh, maybe overused term with the omni-channel, right, is, is something that uh, many, many institutions have been striving towards, whether it's, you know, trying to be able to open an account through a branch and then needing to finish it online, uh, you know, while we want to continue focusing on, on our branches being advice centers and, and really being there understanding our customer needs, I think having that capability online for uh, customers to still be able to open new accounts uh, is, is critical, right? Uh, so making, making those tools available and accessible to them. Um, so if they are unable to come to a branch or, or make those appointments to do so, uh, making it a, a scalable way for them to um, you know, still do their banking needs while not necessarily selling, Right, right now, the focus really is how to help the customers bank from home as opposed to selling new products per the, to them, per se. Um, but having those features available online are, are critical, right? 
you know, physical distancing or social distancing, however you want to describe that, you know, it's not going to really be a, a flip of the switch per se as, as uh, you know, uh, regulations are, start to become more lax across the different, you know, states. And so I, I think customers may still be hesitant around, you know, coming into a branch. Maybe it's going to be, you know, plexiglass between yourself and that and that banker now. Um, but, you know, in terms of, you know, the branches and, and our call center teams, you know, it's it's really, as I've said earlier, education, education, education is really what it comes down to and making sure that our employees are fluent in being able to explore and understand the products and being able to explain those to our customers uh, is really going to help drive the, you know, adoption of our services and, um, you know, keep us uh, relevant with our customers. Yeah, you mentioned it uh, would be nice to have a flip of the switch, wouldn't it, to go back to uh, to, to 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 what it was? But uh, yeah, that doesn't exist. So, um, moving to the to the last poll question. So this is uh, looking at re-entry, and the question is: is what are you most concerned about? And there's a a number of different options there. Uh, Christian, I guess just to continue on with you, what, what are you most concerned about or what, what, what has you concerned the most when you think about reentry um, from a People's United uh, Bank standpoint? Yeah, I think it you know, builds off the things I was kind of just mentioning, right? Um, you know, geography is important for us. Um, we have a pretty dense um, customer base within lower, um, you know, Fairfield County in Connecticut here, closer to New York City. So how do we continue to serve those customers that may have been coming into a branch, um, whether, you know, it's different demographics, you know, millennial versus, you know, Gen X versus baby boomer uh, in their in their banking preferences. So, uh, again, just making sure that those customers are aware of the services that we have uh, and making sure that, you know, maybe their branch contact that they've been working with for years or, or private banker or whoever that may be, right, um, that they may, you know, uh, be comfortable working with. And talking to whether it's you know someone in the call center where again wait times are are, uh, are causing some concerns, but if they're able to to reach out to someone personally and still have that person understand you know really guide them in what their needs are and and um, have that digital conversation around really understanding and discovering you know how that customer's um, life has changed and how we can help them is is important for us. Got it, Kirk. What are your what are your thoughts about the the results to this question? Yeah, I think they they make sense. Um, I think to me, I think um, uh, you know we all want to um, you know connect with our customers and and make sure that they have as many products kind of with us as possible. And 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 our ability to um, be able to efficiently manage those interactions and conversations to to drive kind of needs through um, you know product sales is going to be absolutely you know kind of critical to to make sure we're we've got that connection. And then, you know, D, which is social distancing and customer interactions, I think is going to be absolutely fascinating. Um, I think there's going to be a huge spectrum of how um, uh, people adjust. Uh, I think the, you know, post-COVID is going to be different. Um, I do think you'll have a, a wing of people that will go back to just the way it was before. And so um, what that means for our front line, I think the number of different ways of working will increase in how they interact with our customers. Um, so, yeah, probably aligns with, with, with what I'm thinking. Okay, got it. Well, we're coming up on time, but we do have a couple of questions here um, that have come in. So we'll probably have time for maybe one or two quick questions. So just to throw it out, um, I guess the first question is coming from Charlie D., and his question is, does the call center now become more than a customer service hotline? Um, Brandon, you want to you want to take that one? Yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, for me, I'm I'm closely tied to the call center. As my former manager now runs the call center, so we hear from him a lot. And and when I talk to him and his team, um, there's a rapid increase in the types of services that those bankers, we now call them because we don't want to say customer service rep, right? Like they are bankers, just like our, our, our branch employees are bankers. And we have to expand their knowledge, but also we got to expand their capabilities. So to that point, yes, I think um, not only 
are are they going to expand their capabilities? But we're going to learn from them, and so we can expand our capabilities in the branch network to say if we are going to be one connected bank or omni channel or whatever you want to call it, how do we provide the same experience regardless if someone's calling us at a call center or we're calling them proactively from the branch? So I'm going to I, I believe they're going to become much more banker focused than just customer service focused. Absolutely. Okay, well, I, I am watching time, and that, and that does take us to the bottom of the hour. So first of all, on, on behalf of Horizon, I want to thank the panelists uh, uh, for all joining today. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for your, your, your insightfulness, your comments, and your participation today. We, we greatly appreciate it, and I'm sure all of the participants uh, do as well. Uh, for those that are listening, if you'd like to find out more about Horizon and how we partner with banks to deliver awesome customer digital experiences, You've got my contact information there, so steve.frook at horizon.com. Or, of course, you can go to horizon.com and uh, uh, request a meeting with us as well. So with that, I'm going to turn things back to Tina. Great. Thank you, Steve. And with that, we must conclude today's program. This session has been recorded and will be available within three to five business days. You may access the recorded archive by using the same login information you used for today's live webinar. Feel free to share the recording link with your colleagues. On behalf of the Consumer Bankers Association, thank you to our speakers and, of course, all today's participants. Have a great afternoon. You may now disconnect.